welcome back to the channel this video is going to be a very quick video this video is a, in this video is in a response to a comment i got under the genotype and compatibility video i did the part two video on that and i should naturally have just replied the comment but i felt like this particular question actually deserves a video because i know there might be a lot of people who have the same confusion who have the same conviction and they are actually wrong you understand and it might mislead them when they are making decisions regarding choosing a life partner so i decided to come here and just sit down and do a video and enlighten people about it but let me put out a disclaimer i am not a medical doctor or a medical practitioner i'm just somebody who is interested in health and healthcare and has a little knowledge that i learned from school that I'm trying to share with you guys and based on my own experience also pushed me to do more research intensively on this particular topic. So what I'll be talking about today still relates to AS and AS marriage. And the question that was asked was, I'm going to leave the question somewhere here. So this person was confused like ah, he had that he could get married to an AS person and an AS person could get married and they might end up just having one ss child like in an ideal situation this is how the equation should look like i hope this thing did not turn it upside down but i'm going to leave it if it does i'm going to look for a picture and put it as i'm talking so that you guys can understand when if you don't understand what i'm saying i'm talking about genotype you know we have different types of genotype and genotype also determines how you choose your partner your choice of partner it guides you when you are choosing a partner to settle down with and to have kids so there are different kinds of genotype there's the aa genotype which is the best there is um as genotype which is okay it's not bad but you're a carrier of the sickle um cell gene and then there's the ss which is full sickle cell gene and there is sc so there are different kinds of genotype an as person can marry across you can marry anybody and you would have um, healthy children but as and as and ss sc or cs or anyone you want to call it cannot marry each other you cannot marry people with similar gene they can only marry people who have the aa gene to prevent having children that have the sickle cell traits to understand this better i've done a very intensive video on this i'm going to leave all of them i think i did i've done about three or four videos already on this topic so i'm going to leave all of them down in the description bar and maybe i will be putting up cards so you can see so i'm not going to go too much into that so to answer this question like i said this is the tree when you have the as and the as gene coming together it's assumed that the first time you come together, you would have an AA child. The second time you have an AS child. The third time you have an SA child, which is AS. And finally, is the last try that you now have uh, a sickle, a child with the SS um, gene. One, one thing I want to make clear here is this. If you are an AS person and you marry an AS person, this is like let me say in an ideal situation you know even in chemistry um they would there's what they call ideal there's what let me use geology for example or geography there's what they call distance as the crow fly distance in a straight line probably if i want to a distance from here to lagos in a straight line if you check on your map probably is let me say a hundred kilometers right but in actual life in real life it is not a hundred kilometers because there are bends um roads might have shifted you know so you you might end up spending maybe even 200 kilometers meanwhile as a crow flies it's showing 100 kilometers so in an ideal situation yes it should be 100 kilometer but it's not always so so that's how it is in an ideal situation yes you would you it, it is said that you would have just one child with the ss genotype but i tell you most of the times it doesn't happen like that and the equation will also show you that the child the ss child will come later like you would have had your first second third child before you now have the child with uh, the sickle cell no it's not so that tree just shows you the genes that the possible genes that your children can have and this gene can decide to occur 
in your first try of having children it can decide to occur in your second try it can decide to occur in your fourth try it can decide to occur in your fifth try and it might not even occur that is the cool that's the cool the, the crazy thing about it so it doesn't mean it will follow exactly what that tree or that chart is showing it can occur at any time it can be your first child it can be your second child it can be your third child you might not even end up having a child that has ss and also there are situations where an as and as marry and they only continue to give birth to children with ss gene they would never have a child with as they would never have a child with AA. You understand? So that questions that chat. That questions that chat. So I don't want you to base your relationship or your decision based on that chat that you saw in secondary school. That, okay, and I saw that if AS and AS marry, okay, I think maybe we'll just end up having two children so that we don't end up having SS. Sis, it's not like that. Your first child can be ASS. All your children can be SS. So that is why there is a huge discouragement for people who want to marry, like AS and AS getting married. People always would advise you against it. There is no doctor that would advise you to go ahead, but they would adv they will give you options that if you decide to go ahead with these things, these are things that you can do. And I've talked about most of the options that you can have. Um, in case you decide to get married, but have it at the back of your mind that you might not be able to to um, escape having a child with the SS gene and don't think you can outsmart it and say, okay, since it's occurring as the fourth child, uh, we'll just have one child or we'll just have two children or we'll just have three children. It can be your first issue. So that is why if you are deciding to get married, AS and AS, watch the video I did on genotype and compatibility part one part two and part three there i gave you different options that you can do and tests that you can do to find out the genotype of your child when it is just a fetus in your stomach so you can make a decision better you know what you are having so if you are pregnant i already know the gene of my child even before i give birth to my child i've given all those options i think i mentioned also the clinic that does that here in Nigeria and I think I also give a, gave an estimate of how much this test and all most of the procedures would actually cost you so I decided to make this a video so that other people that might be having this same confusion and other people that you know might be having this conviction in their head that um, AS and AS can marry now after all it is the fourth child that is going to be SS or I'm, after all, I'm only going to have one SS no, you can end up having all your children as SS. So that is why it is discouraged. And I would say this again, which I've said before. Always ask important questions like, what is your genotype at the early stage of your relationship? Early stage, I'm not saying two weeks into the relationship, three months into the relationship, because you still don't know where... The relationship is going but let it be in in the conversation you know let it be in the conversation don't make it too serious like okay i see you in my life so what's your genotype and you just met me what like one week ago you know so how you could bring this up like for me i found ways to bring it up into conversations you know where i might just be talking and i'm like ah I watched one YouTube video yesterday and there was this lady, her, she's a sickler, she was complaining and then it brings up conversations and you might begin to hear experiences. Your partner might also share an experience that they might have had with somebody that has the sickle cell trait or something and then from there you can begin to ask, hmm, like me, I even checked mine, like what's your own genotype? You know, from there, conversations, make sure that these conversations are done early. Have a very healthy communication in your relationship so that you don't get too attached. Feelings don't get too involved and then it's now difficult for you to make a decision for something that is beneficial for your life and for your future. If you're somebody living with sickle cell, you are a warrior. Like, ah, here, a big hug for you. I love you. Keep pushing. Keep grinding. You are a superstar. So, like, come your way again next time. Bye.